watch him closely. Do you watch him closely? Anything else you remember? There is, but I can't remember. Okay, that's fine. This is Juror Z, which is the one out of the 12 that had testimony that seemed to indicate that she was influenced by Becky Hill in delivering her verdict, to some extent, whatever it is. So I'm going to walk you through, and we're going to take a listen um, to all the significant ways that her testimony sort of evolved during the course of the day inside the courtroom. Again, this is Juror Z, the one of 12, the most important juror in Alec Murdoch's attempt to get a new trial today. Take a listen. Was your verdict influenced in any way by the communications of the clerk of court in this case? Yes, ma'am. And how was it influenced? To me, it felt like she made it seem like he was already guilty. All right. And uh, I understand that, uh, that that's the tenor of the remarks she made. Did that affect your finding of guilty in this case? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Your Honor, uh, in the um, affidavit that was given by this particular juror, uh, Paragraph 10 uh, said, I had questions about Mr. Murdoch's guilt, but I vote guilty because I felt pressured by the other jurors. Uh, we would uh, request uh, an inquiry as to that, which is how, uh, when this motion was filed, she expressed uh, the basis for her verdict, uh, which obviously this answer is a little different now. Uh, so we would request uh, a brief inquiry from the court as to that specific issue. Juror Z, uh, I asked you previously, was your verdict on March the 2nd, 2023, influenced in any way by communications from Becky Hill, the clerk of court. Uh, you answered that question, yes. In light of what you said in the affidavit, uh, which is I had questions about Mr. Uh, Murdoch's guilt, but voted guilty because I felt pressured by the other jurors. Is that answer uh, that I just read a more accurate statement of how you felt? Yes. Overruled. Yes, ma'am. All right. So you do stand by the affidavit? Yes, ma'am. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Harper. Your Honor, we objected to the questioning because this juror gave two statements under oath, one in an affidavit and one here to you today. The one here today was Becky Hill influenced her verdict. Yes. The one she gave in an affidavit six months ago was it was based on jurors. It could be both. Your Honor, did, did picked out the one in the affidavit from six months ago and said, is that a more accurate statement? That presupposes and suggests to her what she should say. And uh, we believe that this, this juror's testimony, um, and, and Your Honor, I'm afraid what you're going to say is, well, she said the affidavit was more accurate than what she testified under oath here today, and therefore I'm not going to consider her testimony. And I think that's where we're heading here. I'd ask you to bring her back in, explain to her there's nothing wrong with it both being true. Uh, I decline to do that and overrule the objection. I have a communication from Mr. McCullough. The 19 today. That's only, that, that, that is copied to Mr. Harpootlin, Mr. Griffin, Mr. Waters, and Attorney General Wilson. Uh, and basically, uh, uh, says his client, uh, Juror Z, uh, wants to enhance the testimony she gave with some sort of affidavit that uh, uh, he wants me to look at, and I have looked at. Uh, I, uh, will, I want to hear from the state and the defense, but I can tell you I'm not inclined to uh, get back into the testimony that's already been taken by these jurors. Uh, her inconsistencies, whatever they are, are in the record, uh, and she now wants to have another bite at the apple. I'm not at all enthusiastic about that. So Justice Toll didn't want to hear any more from Juror Z, who is represented by Joe McCullough, 
who you've seen on the show many times, Joe McCullough has issued this statement to Court TV. After the questioning of jurors today, I spoke with my client, Juror Z, and we were concerned there was a lack of clarity from her testimony created by an incomplete affidavit from several months ago and the progression of questions asked in the hearing. To add clarity and protect Juror Z from accusations of inconsistency, we prepared an affidavit detailing that she felt influenced by both comments made by the clerk of court prior to deliberations and pressure from other jurors during deliberations. Today's affidavit was then submitted to the court, the state, and the defense, and it's my understanding that it's been filed with the Supreme Court as a part of the record in this case. It got more complicated. Unbelievable. Let's bring in our guests. We've got great ones, our Low Country insiders. Uh, in Columbia, South Carolina, attorney, host of the Cup of Justice podcast, Eric Bland is with us, also in Columbia, South Carolina. Criminal defense attorney, Lori Murray. And in Charlotte, North Carolina, host of the podcast, The Murdoch Family Murders, Impact of Influence, Matt Harris. Thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, Eric, your thoughts. Juror Z, Becky Hill today. Um, what, what, what did you, what did you see? What did you hear? What we saw was a decisive judge who is very learned, understands the law, was going to apply South Carolina case law under the green case. Um, I think what ended up happening is the defense focused too much on Becky Hill. They obviously proved that she has credibility issues and just as toll announced that from the bench. And I think they really didn't focus hard enough on the juror issues. And it did whatever Becky Hill may have said impacted the verdict. That was the key issue that Justice Toll was going to focus on. Two weeks ago, she told the defense, this is not going to be a trial about Becky Hill. And Harpootley and made the trial about Becky Hill. They just, uh, they didn't, they should have seen this coming. Um, she telegraphed basically what she wanted to hear. And... 11 jurors showed up and unequivocally said that nothing impacted their verdict except the law, the testimony, and the evidence. And juror number Z vacillated, and uh, Justice Toll took note of it. Lori Murray, what did you see? What did you hear inside that courtroom today? Well, I think that the, the biggest issue is that nobody in the legal community is sure that this is the right standard that she is applying, the green stands for what she says green stands for and that is going to come into play in the appeal i think that she has set it up you know they've created a very good record on appeal and they have a lot of of issues for this appeal that could very well get him a new trial down the road and honestly if he's going to get a new trial now would be a better time for the prosecution versus down the road because the evidence is going to be stale down the road but I still think that they have a very good shot, um, whether it so you don't be think it's from over. this issue or from another one. Matt I Harris, think it's over. Matt Harris, let me ask you. You know, the courtroom yeah. is a place where the truth is supposed to come out. As you, and I saw you with that nice blue jacket in in there today. I could see you in the rafters. Um, did you get a sense that the truth came out today inside the courtroom? No, and. Uh, I have a, that's where I have a problem. I'm not a lawyer like you, smarty pants. I'm just a dumb podcaster guy. But I'm looking at the goal, I thought, was to get to the truth. Uh, and I say, take Alec Murdoch out of this, all right? Due process is all, that's a huge, major right that we have in this country. So imagine it's your mom on there, right? Your mom's in trial. She gets convicted of, of murdering your, your dad and your son or something. And then a juror comes out and says, I was influenced by a juror, and that's why I did what I did. And they go, but eh, we're not going to ask her about it that much. A couple other times she said it didn't. I'd be like, what? wait, what? Because like Justice Tolk, I mean, maybe she's doing it by the law. I don't know. But it seems to me what an easy question would have been was to say, okay, on your affidavit, you said this. And now you just said this. How do you, how do you reconcile this too? But instead it was like, okay believe the affidavit you gave we're just going to skip the fact that you said this and if, the, if it's about getting to the truth then there's got to be more questions like okay which is it when was it why'd you change your mind i mean let's dig into it forget it's alec murdoch i think is the key because people are so he's obviously a, a jackass but that's not the point um so that bothered me as someone who thought the goal was to get the truth
Okay, everyone stay where you are. We're going to take a, a, a short break, and when we come back, um, we're going to talk about Jersey uh, and Becky Hill, everything that happened today. Um, there he is, Alec Murdoch. He lost today, but as Lori Murray told us, it, it's not over. They're just uh, starting their fight, as they always do when they get convicted of murder. frequently discussed the case during breaks before deliberation. Is that uh, correct? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> what? what? What was this jury doing? What was going on back there? This is, uh, I don't know. Let's bring back in our guests. Uh, we've got Eric Bland, Lori Murray, Matt Harris. Eric, um, the jurors talking to each other before deliberations? I mean... Every case I've covered for 20 years here at Court TV, it's been very clear what's allowed, what's not allowed. What are your thoughts about that? Is that, is that problematic? Um, no, it's not problematic. It probably happens more than we would want it to. Um, but, you know, again, not all many jurors said that. There was one that may have said that. So, you know, there's a lot of people that really thought that Alex was going to get a new trial, and you know, as a lawyer, Vinny, and the lawyers, uh, Lori on this show knows that once somebody loses in a hearing, the next thing they say is, oh, my God, we got a great appeal. I can't wait to appeal this. When they really wanted a new trial, they never wanted an appeal. So what's Harpootlian going to say when he gets in front of the cameras other than this is great fodder for appeal? Um, they lost, and they lost big time today. And what? it's years down the road before they can ever get a reversal. Oh, it's going to be, it's going to take some time. Um, Lori Murray, something else happened today that was a little surprising, and it happened today in the jury room. Let's take a listen. Counsel, I have to report this to you, and I'm uh, very, very unhappy about it, but uh, there's nothing to do but put it on the record, and then I will proceed with questioning the rest of the jurors. The jurors' cell phones were not... Uh, confiscated or taken from them. And they tune this thing in on court TV and listen to all of what just went on. So uh, you may make whatever uh, uh, statement you like to make, and then I'm going to go on and question the jurors. I will tell you in advance, I am not going to uh, uh, stop the proceedings or uh, do anything to interrupt them. I'm going to get the rest of this on the, the record. You might imagine that they no longer have their cell phones with them. Laurie Murray, how does this happen? Don't you know that they're watching court TV? This is, you know, this is the thing for me. There was there was some misconduct there. They actually knew that uh, they're sequestered. They're not allowed in the courtroom. Therefore, they knew that they weren't supposed to be watching it on their phones. There was supposed to be a bailiff in there with them. They weren't supposed to be doing this, and they did it anyway. And I, you know, I'm just going to go a little bit further in this. When you had the clerk of court from Barnwell testify, she comes in and says, Becky told me she gave a juror a ride home. And the defense did not harp on this as much as I probably would have. They called Becky Hill out for lying about it, but they didn't say no juror said that they got a ride home from her. No juror admitted this conduct. So I think that there's some misconduct on the part of the jurors here from, from the get-go during their testimony. And I think it, you know, should have been borne out. But I also think that Justice Toll could possibly have had her decision made before she walked in the door this morning. Let's get to um, another moment here, Matt. And, and again, this is uh, Dick Harputlian cross-examining uh, Becky Hill. I'll, ju I'll just play it, let you react. During the trial, um, your, your daughter ended up on the Venari, is that right? She did. And... Um, she was coming up, and did you talk to me and, and Mr. Waters about putting her on the jury, if at all possible? I'm not sure that we wanted her to be on the jury, if at all possible, but um, I think the question was, um, would she make a good juror? And I said, she sure, she sure would. Now, I don't think we asked you. I think you told us she would make a great juror, did you not? I remember you asking. Okay, okay. I was considering putting your daughter on the jury. Yes, sir. 
Matt Harris, what's happening here? What, I, I don't understand this. I, I, I completely do not, like the second court of clerk who came in, um, I understood her, like, like the way she did her job. This is just weird. It's so weird. I couldn't even like, there were so many times I'm like, what is happening here? But that's been what I've been saying for two years, right? Well, how is this ever gonna end? And there was so many ebbs and flows today. And also it was uh, odd because the original hearing or we, we, the official title was where Justice Toll was like, we're not going to talk about whether Becky's are credible or not. And the next thing we know today, they are talking about whether Becky's credible or not because they bring in the other witnesses. And Dick's like, I got these two that are out in the hallway and I got the egg juror. She's like, no, oh, that's where I draw the line is the egg juror. Uh, and then there was, you know, the thing about did she give her a ride, not give her a ride. And why would everybody lie about not giving a ride? So obviously he did give her a ride. Like it was just all these weird little things. And then at the end, it sounds like we didn't even have to hear from Becky because Justice Toll says, it doesn't matter if she said anything or not. It doesn't matter because it was not prejudicial. It did not change their uh, ruling. So why do we just waste all the time with Becky Hill when it didn't even matter if she said anything? That was like all confusing and weird. So Eric, it do you believe that Becky Hill said something to Juror Z? She may have. I mean, I'm not going to question Juror Z's uh, uh, recollection, uh, but it's really not the issue that was before Justice Toll. I mean, she told you she was going to employ Green, so it was incumbent upon the defense to show that it impacted the jury's verdict. They they may disagree. Laurie may disagree. Matt may disagree that it should have been the Supreme Court standard. But this is what this justice wanted to do, this judge wanted to do. And if you wanted to win this court hearing, you better do what the judge wants you to do. They seem to have tried to set this up for appeal, which was the dumbest thing in the world. And then she finally said, OK, fine, I'll give you what you want. Question Becky Hill, show that she's not credible. So that they took that uh, quiver, that arrow away from Harpoon Lee's quiver this afternoon. She told you, show me that it impacted the jurors. They couldn't do it. And uh, Lori, we only have about 30 seconds here. I guess that what would have made this hearing different was if the lawyers questioned all of the jurors, especially Juror Z. What, what are your thoughts here? Did, do you feel like the truth came out today? No, I don't. I don't think that, I think there's a lot of stuff that we don't know. There's no way that Becky is making the exact comments to the other clerk that these jurors heard. How would they know what those comments were when they gave those affidavits? There, there's no way. And Juror Z, the question that Justice Toll asked her at the very end was a leading question. And if you're not prepared to answer and coached on how to answer legal you know, leading questions, you're going to answer the way that you're led. And I think that's what happened here. I don't think we got the truth. All right. Our Low Country insiders, Eric Bland, Lori Murray, Matt Harris, thank you all so much. Appreciate your time and your insight.